Hello mathematicians, today's video is on the coordinate plane and all the different parts of the coordinate plane. So our objective is students will be able to draw and label the coordinate plane. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to get the objective down and then plus play when you're ready. Alright, today we're going to be talking about the Cartesian coordinate system. And that basically is just the system that we use to graph points that are with an x and a y axis. So that what we want to do first is label all the different parts of the graph so you can see what's going on. So the first thing I want to label is the x and the y axis. We have two axes here. They're the darker lines. Um, the x axis is the one that runs horizontally or left to right. I'm kind of underlining it in red. That's the x axis. Okay. The y-axis is the one that runs vertically or up and down. I'm kind of highlighting that in blue next to it. That's the y-axis. And we use the x and the y-axis to plot points. And they're called a coordinate pair, and they're labeled as x, comma, y. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into how to plot points. For right now, I just want you to know that they have an x-axis and a y-axis. We also have something called the origin. Okay, and the origin is this point right here. It's where the two lines intersect. The origin is actually at the point 0, 0, because if we look at our graph, right here is where we would have a 0. This is called the origin, and it's at the point 0, 0. Now, when we label the graph, every little line on the graph represents 1. You could label your graph counting by 2s. You could label it counting by 1s. So I'm going to label the y-axis counting by 1s. So we would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven. Notice I drew the numbers right on the lines themselves. Okay, going to the left, it's kind of like a number line. If zero is right there, then to the left you're going to have a negative one, and then a negative two, and then a negative three, a negative four, a negative five, a negative six. Right? The y-axis works the same. Think of it kind of like a thermometer, okay? If zero is right here, then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then going down the other way, we could have one negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven. So we have the origin label, we have the x and the y axes. The last thing that I want you to learn about these graphs is that there's something called quadrants. Quadrants just refer to the region of the graph that we're in. If you look, there's four different regions or four different sections to this graph. And so we call the, each section or each region a different quadrant number because that kind of helps us describe what do the points in that quadrant look like. So the first quadrant is quadrant 1. Okay? And if we look, in quadrant 1, the x values are all positive and the y values are all positive. Okay? So if I had said, oh, this point is in quadrant 1, it tells you something about the x and the y values of that point. Now, quadrants go around in a circle, but the circle is counterclockwise. What I mean by that is I want you to imagine really quickly we had a clock. Okay, here's 12 o'clock, here's 6, here's 3, and here's 9. Clockwise means when you follow the clock around, the way the hand on the clock would move. When we write our quadrants, we actually go something called counterclockwise. That means we go backwards, the other way. So the second quadrant is actually going to be to the left of the first. That's the second quadrant. Our third quadrant is down here, and our fourth quadrant is here. You'll notice that I wrote the different quadrants using num Roman numerals. That's how we write quadrants. We never use numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4. We always use Roman numerals. As I was saying before, these quadrants help us identify, okay, what kind of points lie in, the, in those parts. So, as I said before, like in the first quadrant, your x and your y are always going to be positive. In the second quadrant, you're going to have a negative x and a positive y. And this will make a little bit more sense when we talk about how to plot points. And in your third quadrant, we're going to have a negative x and a negative y. And in our fourth quadrant, a positive x and a negative y. You don't need to memorize the signs that will be in the different quadrants right now. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about plotting points. But just know that these quadrants help us identify what different types of points lie within those regions. All right, next thing I want to do is fill out uh, the vocabulary. To the bottom 
of our page where we have these vocabulary words, and we are going to uh, write down a couple definitions for ourselves. We've already talked about what these words mean, but this is an opportunity for us just to fill in some formal definitions. So first one, we have the x-axis. Okay, we've talked about the x-axis. That's the axis that runs horizontally, so it's the horizontal axis, or the one that runs from left to right. If you looked at a picture, okay, this is the axis right here. It's the one moving left to right. Next, we have the y-axis. That is the one that runs up and down or the vertical axis. So this is the vertical axis. It's the one that runs up and down. That would be the one here. Full for me is to think about Okay, how do I remember which one is X and which one is Y? If you think of the horizontal axis as being X, I always think about the horizontal axis as like the horizon. The horizon is when the sun comes up or goes down. It's, it's that point when you look out and you can see land and you can't see the sun or you can see it dropping up or come going down or coming up. That's called the horizon. So I think of that as the horizontal line, which is the X axis. Okay. Vertical axis is going to be Y. You can think about that's kind of like a guy who plays basketball and has a high vertical or jumps really high. That's the vertical axis. All right, the reason we have arrows on the end of the axes is because our axes go on forever. Our graph has to be a certain size in order to fit on the page, but the graph would get bigger and bigger. Okay, they, the numbers go on forever and ever in every direction. So the arrows on the end of our axis signify that the axes go on forever. Okay, and that's why if we look at our graph, we would put arrows on the end of the graph. The point where the two lines intersect, that's called the origin. We talked about that before. Okay, that's where this middle point right here, that's your zero, zero, that's the origin. And then the four different regions of the graph, those are called quadrants. Remember, if you're looking at a graph, this would be number one, and then we have two going counterclockwise and using Roman numerals three and four. Right, pause the video if you need to get done any of these notes, and then we're going to do a little bit of practice. Okay, I want to do two quick practices with you. And what I want you to do is look at these two graphs right here, and we're gonna go ahead and label some different parts of the graph. So, I want you on this first one to label the following. I want you to label the X and the Y, label the origin, I want you to number the graph, and then I want you to label the quadrant. So go ahead and pause the video on this graph right here, this one. I want you to go ahead and label the x and the y-axis, the origin, the numbers on the graph, and the quadrants. Press pause and then press play again so you can see if you got the answer right. All right, you should have had your origin right here. We could have drawn an arrow. This was the origin. If we labeled our graph, we would have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is our x-axis and our y-axis. And then when we look at this, we have positive x values and positive y values. So this is our first quadrant. All right, I want you to go ahead and try one more example. We're going to divide this graph down here up. I'm going to draw lines at the end of my axes so we know they go on forever in every direction. I want you to go ahead and label this second one with all the same things we labeled from above. Okay, you should have had this as your zero, and we would have had one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. Again, one, two, three, 
and then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Your origin is this point right here. And then our quadrant should have been 1, 2, 3, and 4. And our x and y axis were x and y. That's it for today's video. Please come to class ready to practice and with any questions that you may have.